I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz. Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden still plan to be in Phoenix for a planned CNN debate on Sunday. Only there will be no audience in attendance. That's not due to coronavirus, but it's to make the CNN anchors more comfortable since they're not used to anyone watching them. President Trump will address the American people this evening in just under two hours. He'll be there to give us an update on the coronavirus situation here in the United States. And he is expected to commend the statistics because, as we know, he likes viruses that don't get caught. And finally, <laughs> the city of New York has canceled its annual St. Patrick's Day parade for the first time in the event's 238 year history. But don't worry, New Yorkers, there's no way anyone would try to stand in the way of the more prestigious tradition of vomiting green beer in the middle of the street. The trauma board starts now. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. And most years, it's so cold on St. Patrick's Day, it freezes in the street. Welcome to the Trump mm -hmm. Report. I'm Christian Blatt. We are here to report on so many things, joined, as always, by Chelsea Galicia. Hello. And Scott Moore. Hey, it's good to be here. AKA the S-Man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, so much to talk about uh, last night. I didn't like calling last night Super Tuesday 2. That takes away from Super Tuesday. Just call it, I don't know, Super Duper Tuesday? Or I, come up with something <laughs> else to call it. How about Terrific Tuesday? Let's use the alliteration. Super List Tuesday. Well, yeah. it, was, it was not a Super Tuesday for uh, a, a specific gentleman who uh, has three houses in Vermont. I don't think <laughs> it's fact. These three houses in Vermont, isn't it? No, no, no one of those in DC. Two, two houses yeah, in two. Vermont. Yeah, but that's why I say it's not a big deal because two of those houses in Vermont, what do they possibly cost? Like forty grand? So it's fine. I don't think it's a big deal that he has two houses in Vermont and he needs a house in DC because he lives there. I mean, he works there. Anyway, uh, not a great night for Bernie, uh, but you know he spoke earlier today. I don't know if uh, it, how many of you had a chance to see it, and he uh, did a pretty good job explaining how we might be losing. But really, we're winning, you know, except for the part where we're losing. <laughs> so, you know, I, I look, you got to rally. You got to rally the troops. You want people to come out. And I think what I was reading that at this point going forward, he would need to win 55 percent of the remaining delegates. And I'm like, well, it's not impossible. Uh, I, last night. No. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, Andrew Yang said that the math wasn't there. And I'm like, I thought this guy knew all the math. Math, math is difficult, but it's there. Chelsea, what are your thoughts on? Uh, Stupor Tuesday? Can we call oh. it that? Mm. I don't know, but not Stupid Tuesday because I don't want uh, I, d I don't want to shame any of the days of the week. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We wouldn't want to inflict not, any not in mental distress mm -mm. on anybody. Mm -mm. Um, I I've already in my heart and mind called it a day for Bernie that it is just not his not his day, not his year, not you're, his president. You're, you're not still lighting a candle for Tulsi Gabbard, who's technically still in the race. <laughs> She's the only other one. <laughs> but Bernie's no. still on the race. Bernie's still on the race. some delegates. Yes. But, yeah. But He's got I, a lot of delegates. But <laughs> I think the writing is, like, on the wall, highlighted and bolded. It's just uh, it's just not going to happen. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by the degree to which it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it makes me sad for the country I, I, that, I guess, moderate is, like, the good word. And uh, they... Uh, have managed to paint Bernie with enough not moderate, so extreme, radical, far left, mm -hmm. communist, that 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 those bad words were worse than moderate. Where to me, moderate is the bad word because I understand over the course of history that we veered sharply to the right. So moderate just means right light versus. Bernie to me and Elizabeth Warren represented a move to the left 
but we, I, I don't know how many years we'd need to veer to the left in order to get back to the center. Sure. Uh, let's just hypothetically uh, fast forward uh, eight months, which I think maybe a lot of us would be happy to do. Uh, just hypothetically, uh, Joe Biden is the nominee and, you know, he doesn't wander off a stage in the middle of a, a, of an event and, you know, he stays healthy. Uh, if he, if he wins, how are you going to feel in November versus if say, uh, President Trump were to be reelected? May, you know, relief for sure for some, for, you know, for, for all the people that are not going to be held in cages. Sure. Um, but for the country, it will be a it just, I, I mean, a, a return to normal. I think people maybe will quickly remember that normal wasn't so great. Uh, fine, I guess. But uh, so some relief for, for the people that were really victimized by this administration. And, you know, I don't use that word lightly because I, I, I don't. I don't want people to feel like they're victims, but I, um, there are some, you there know, are certainly victim. people who I could see feeling that way. And, uh, I, I think that there are, you know, certainly there were like victims from Obama. There were plenty of people that we were bombing around the world, which, you know, could be considered worse than caging them. Um, but for the people that won't be, you know, caged for, for some of the really just, unbelievable like, cruelty that we inflict on people, I will feel better sure. about that. But we will get to a place where people are like, oh yeah, democracy works, everything's fine, you know, go back to your life. And and, and it, it's it's so not, it will not be fixed, it will not be better. Right. I, I, although I wonder, can you get from the point where we are now to a point where, you know, can you get anywhere other than just back to the way it was? Can you fix those problems when you have to first fix other problems? Uh, Scott, just <laughs> overall thoughts on, you know, the right. way Tuesday went and uh, yeah. Biden, Bernie. Um, if you want to, if you want to shout out Tulsi, I won't stand in your way. <laughs> Why well, I... I I agree with Chelsea. I think the writing's on the wall. And I think after next Tuesday, for sure. Uh, Super Bernie, duper duper, duper Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. Part three, we're going to have, uh, you know, Bernie's really going to have to come to a decision here if he's going to continue on or if he's going to be able to say, you know, it's time to to wrap it up and, you know, go into the sunset here. Uh, what you were saying, though, Chelsea, is true. I think this has been an ongoing issue that didn't happen overnight. This right word shift has been happening since Reagan got elected in 80 and it's just gotten further and further right. And before that, you have to go back to the 70s and you see like Ford and Nixon being more of those moderate, well, I would say liberal Republicans from the Rockefeller East Coast sort of Republican mold. And you go back to the 60s when you had Kennedy and Johnson as being more in the liberal Democrats. We haven't had that since then because even when you look at Jimmy Carter, you look at Bill Clinton, you look at a lot of ways, a lot of Barack Obama was a little bit more to the left, but even compared to in the past, we have not had a real progressive leftward president since the 60s. So and in and during Obama's time, even though he was left, yeah, the court went right. Exactly. Well, even though, he, but he still wasn't really as far left as you would see back. So it's going to take a long time. It's not going to happen overnight. And clearly what we've seen by the voters is they're, worried and this socialism has been painted in such a negative way and they're worried and i agree with you i think moderate to me equals boring it's like you're not going to do anything dramatic especially joe biden who's basically a conservative democrat if you really mm -hmm. look back to where he started in the 70s and you're not going to see a huge shift the only thing that i'm hopeful for is that he will be able to if he if he wins election in the fall and doesn't do anything too crazy um that he'll be able to pick some more leftward people in the cabinet and maybe judges i mean that's the only thing i can be hopeful for at this point but i think it, we'll get into the the minutiae of the results but i was fascinated to see especially where bernie in 2016 versus 2020 biden versus hillary was just really kind of fascinating those numbers in some yeah. of the states that yeah, I switched between the coverage on yeah. CNN and Fox News, and they were both making the the same point, sort of that you know Bernie didn't not only didn't build on the the turnout in 2016, it, you know it, it dropped off uh, sort of drastically, and then there was also highlighting the idea that there were less young people uh, turning up. There's a lot of people, I guess, in in a lot of these contests, not so much specifically last night. Uh, but in general, uh, that, yeah, so I think just in general. And then, of course, that's just the idea of, like, how how many votes for Bernie were just 
I hate Hillary votes. Right, and that's what I'm wondering votes, too now. How many now. votes for Trump where I hate Hillary right. votes? You and know? that's what I'm wondering now if there, there's a case to say, would Bernie have done worse last time around if Hillary wasn't the other person? Mm -hmm. it, it was fascinating because I really thought, I, I guess I'm surprised too because I really thought Bernie was having the momentum before mm -hmm. South Carolina. And then you start seeing these results with Biden versus Bernie, you know, and or, or versus Hillary in the same votes in like Michigan and Idaho and uh, some of these other states where you're like, wow, there's a really big difference of the votes that have peeled away from Bernie Sanders and have gone to Biden, or you could say that were, you know, maybe voted for uh, Biden this time around instead of Bernie like they did in 16. So yeah. it was really interesting to see those numbers so different compared to four years ago. Yeah, no, no, I, I definitely, I, I don't know, it's interesting to sort of see all of that. And it, it uh, was a, a big night for Joe Biden. Uh, one of the states that he won was Michigan, which, Ryan, that is a great transition to uh, the clip I had you pull. So he won a state where uh, he felt like the best way to campaign <laughs> was to have uh, this interaction uh, with a, uh, you know, a, a prospective voter, someone who could have, you know, clicked off a, a, a Biden name uh, on his, uh, elect assumingly, electronic ballot. Let's uh, check out a little of this, Ryan. I support the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, just like right now, if you yell fire, that's not free speech. But from the very beginning, I have a shotgun, I have a 20 gauge, 12 gauge, my son's hunt. Guess what? You're not allowed to own any weapons. I'm not taking your gun away at all. You need 100 rounds. You were in NATO and you said you're going to take our gun. I did well. not say that. That's you not true. I did not it's say that. Video. It's a viral video like the other ones are putting out that are saying they're lying. Your own voice. Oh, he just glorified it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's let's take the AR, the AR-14s and what? Yeah, this is not okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. Hey, let's get those people. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys wanting this. Thank you so much. I, yeah, at some point he, he says uh, he, he says he's full of shit, I, or or that's yeah, bullshit, or yeah. something like that. And uh, you know, the, do you want to go outside? And this isn't the first time that he's offered to. This isn't the first time he's offered to fight somebody. So he's yeah. he's swearing at voters, and at the very beginning of the clip, and then again, he tells a woman to shush. And I I was joking before we started, but this is the first time I've really felt that Biden can win because clearly <laughs> the American people will vote for someone who shushes women and then tries to, you know, well, first of all, uh, swears at people and then wants to take them outside. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's a very Michigan-seeming interaction, as far as I can tell. Uh, and uh, all you can think in the age of uh, coronavirus is, uh, man, there were a lot of people mm -hmm. around him. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, I don't know, uh, Chelsea, when you see something like that, and look, by the way, that can happen to anyone. That, right. you know, there can be a moment where anybody can lose their cool. I just feel like we've maybe seen a lot more of those out of Joe. I'm just going to say in the 2020 calendar year, I'm not even going to look back to earlier in the campaign. What do you think when you see that, Chelsea? Um, I think uh, I, too, was almost like, oh, wow, actually, if he can go toe to toe with a mm -hmm. voter and just and, and be a little aggressive like sure. that. Um, it's not like I like it, but I think it might be effective. It might be what it might be what uh, people want to hear and see. I mean, it, because it, that's real. It's yeah. raw. I mean, it's just unpolished. Just think the last debate that we saw Biden in. It, God, it was back when Bloomberg was still in the race. What was that 100 years ago? <laughs> and it was a lot of like, yeah, that's what I think, too. You know what I mean? It was a lot of that. And now it's like, all right, Joe, well, you know, you, you can at least win this nomination. We'll, we'll worry about beyond that after. Let's uh, let's try and step it up but a little bit. But he's gonna need help with his comebacks. Like you, when he was like, think? Mm -hmm. like, let's go outside. The vi viral video. Yeah. And okay, have you I... never heard of fake viral videos, dude? Yeah. Well, I mean, sure. There's there's the one where Joe Biden was endorsing Mike Bloomberg and <laughs> Donald know? Trump and right. Donald so, Trump. Yeah. So somebody needs to tell say. him that the best comeback sometimes yeah. is a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I, but isn't he a lawyer also? Joe mm -hmm. Biden. I feel like everybody I mean, is somebody I mean, that's like, you know. But he's, a, he's been he's in a, since seventy he's, he's three. A, he's a, yeah, I mean he's he's a lawyer in the way Judge Judy's yeah. a judge. I mean you know? yeah, he is. Uh, but I can help him with his well, I mean, somebody comeback. should a comedian yeah. could help him with his comeback mm -hmm. and somebody like me. Yeah, look, I, mean, I think that I think he should travel with the team, you know. The league. Actually, why doesn't he just bring us with him on the road? You know, if it means not doing the show, that's fine. You know, we can tweet what we think. But uh, you know, I think that uh 
I don't. I feel like that sort of interaction can be uh, fairly problematic because uh, you know, obviously, even ten years ago, but certainly fifteen, twenty years ago, something like that, you it's, might not get it on cameras. But everything mm-hmm. but that anybody I, says and I, does is out there. But I think people trust those interactions more than what people say on a debate stage or in a commercial. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they're more authentic those moments, you know. But this isn't the first time he's asked if somebody wants to step outside. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I, you know, you, let's go back to mm-hmm. uh, I think it was last year when he he challenged Donald Trump to a push up contest. Which, by the way, I would <laughs> if they want to if they want to do that for one of the debates. Instead of a debate, where yeah. they both do push-ups yeah, yeah. and we just see can either of them get to two you know I, you know it's like, and if that's like all right whoever does like, whoever does the most push-ups becomes president sorry what were you gonna say i was gonna say the fact that that is like sort of outlandish but not even really no that it's outlandish, crazy yeah just just <laughs> it's like i mean animals savages on, on uh, politics that's where that's where we are and if politics is really just a reflection of our kind of deep down buried emotions mm-hmm. yeah. then that's saying a lot about where we are which you know I was talking to somebody right before the, the show started and I was like America needs therapy and she's like mm-hmm. yeah actually I have tweeted that before mm-hmm. America needs therapy so I think um, you know whenever I hear somebody say you know make America or keep America great again my thing is America needs therapy uh, I, I think if we had therapy we had a healthier self esteem mm-hmm. we'd see different uh different results and and trump's crumbs would not be enough for americans and we would we would be grateful for what we have but we could also know that we're worth more uh quick question how many carbs and grams of fat do you think are in one donald trump crumb it probably i'm gonna guess a lot of each well my my because we're talking like kfc probably those crumbs yeah those crumbs are laced with chemicals (laughs) right um way too much gluten um, just way too all processed. Heat. Yeah, yeah, all processed. Yeah, um, they're just not healthy. But but they but there's they're plentiful crumbs, and so people think that they're coming up. What were you going to say? Scott? No, I was going to say I I agree with you, Chelsea. I they're don't... probably GMO crumbs. <laughs> well, they're definitely GMO. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I do not Monsanto like Santo laced chemicals with cancerous. <laughs> I don't like uh, Biden's response here, and I think it's it's again like you were saying, it's kind of bringing it down to the Trump level. But I, on the other hand, I do appreciate the passion that he has, and that he's showing that passion, and that and it's a little more real. It's not so stilted, and you know, giving the same because he keeps giving the same. You he know, like all politicians do. Like, dude, yeah, we re- really, you need to question fake videos, yeah, and you, you need to do a little bit more research. But I'm telling you right here, right now. That that was wrong, or you misunderstood it. But let me be clear: mm-hmm. this is where what I'm saying. But he also wasn't clear before when he, he was he he did the Trump thing where he had a lot of sentences on the same topic, but they were not connected. Right. Yeah. They they didn't flow, so it yeah. didn't make it clear that he was saying, "I don't believe that everyone should be able to obtain all types of guns." Yeah, or he could have just made a joke and was like, "Yeah, I mean, look, Beto did want to take your guns, and where is he now? All right, yeah. I'll see you later. I yeah. gotta go." Yeah. Uh, I just think it was just no. I was just saying. I think it was again something you shouldn't do to a voter in that aggressive sense. I know you can disagree, and some people said, "Oh, that was a a plant," and you know all this other crazy stuff. That interaction was a plant. Yes, that that guy came up and that he was part of. He would have he would have had a couple of better comebacks in his pocket if that was a plant. I know you would think, but that's what you hear from some people too, is saying like he was put there to to uh, you know get under Joe's skin and everything. But oh, I see. You mean mean, a plant by Bernie? Oh, I thought you meant Bernie. I'm just saying, just in general. Okay, but but some some kind of opposition. Plant. Yes, I thought you meant like Biden plan no, because like no, because no, no, he doesn't no, no, look no. good there. I mean, I no. want to know in this like gun control debate, do they believe that toddlers should have guns? You mean like well, a voter like that who's they, asking that question? It, no, a real life is, toddler is that like, right. toddler, like your kids? It, it, well, they are let me American ask, let me ask citizens. my question: uh, Are my kids out hunting? Because if they're not. I I would be afraid that they're not equipped to stop a you know a charging deer if they don't have guns. So uh, what's the what is the activity that my kids are doing as to whether or not they're uh, defending their home? Oh, are we are 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 they about to uh, what do they call it? A quarter soldiers in my home? Then uh, I'm no, glad but, that they have the right to bear arms and keep us this, safe. If you read the Second Amendment, it doesn't exclude toddlers. Well, it doesn't say yeah, anything about an age, right? It doesn't say for. American right. citizens, so I, 21 and I would ask or that guy right there. Yeah. Do do you think? That, how about even convicted murderers? The Second Amendment doesn't say anything about a convicted murderer can mm-hmm. no longer have a gun. So, we we read into it commonsensical limitations mm-hmm. that are not there in the black and white letter of the law. So I don't understand why I'm not hearing that 
point being made. Uh, to, to circle back on to an earlier point uh, about young voters uh, perhaps being less engaged, I did want to bring in a young voter, our very own Ryan in the booth, who is a young voter. Yes. Uh, I wanted to uh, get your thoughts. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to ask you uh, anything about anybody you voted for if you don't want to say, but uh, what do you, how do you see all of this playing out as you cover your lunch to make sure that nobody knows what you're That's having? That's right. It looks good, though, by the way. I appreciate it. Are I we haven't... wearing the same shirt, by the way? I think uh, mine's a little more flowery. <laughs> yeah, but, yours is uh, a little actually, louder than mine. Yeah. I actually haven't voted yet. I'm a, I, have I, thought a... you did a, oh, I thought you already did your absentee ballot. But I did. Oh. I did, but Wait it hasn't like been cast. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, so you filled it out. Filled it out. Mm. Right. I thought been... you were about to tell me that you were for going to vote state? twice. Oh, for uh, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Yeah. Because I think it matters more. Uh, so what is the question? <laughs> so what do you think about all this? Yeah, I thought you had voted already, but uh, that it actually doesn't matter in, in response to this. Uh, what do you think about the way this is playing out uh, about uh, uh, Joe Mentum versus uh, Burnout, yeah, as I, I believe oh. I entitled this episode? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I... I firmly believe Joe Biden will lose Donald Trump no matter what. Uh, I don't think he stands a chance. I think he's going to get annihilated. Uh, I think his gaffes are more than gaffes. They're like, these are huge things. Like, if he can't, if he can't uh, control himself by himself, and then he's going to be on stage with Donald Trump, who is, I mean, say what you will say about him, he's an incredible debater. Uh, he, he's, he's he's a showman, and he knows how to he knows how to work a crowd. Now, if those debates are in front of no audience, he's not a good debater. No, but. no, if no, no. But he, he, you know, he's a presence. And what if that? What if that's? What if there is no studio audience for a presidential Ooh. debate? That would be fascinating, by the way. Uh, and would, I wanted to let you finish your thought. I just, I just wanted to. Yeah, I just. Uh, I'm not. So I'm not feeling great. I also think that. Um, I don't know if I produced this show in the past two weeks, but I think like Elizabeth Warren has has really ruined a lot of her. Legacy the past two weeks. Ooh, uh, it, in what way? By and, no and, one, uh, by no one voting for her. Or? By no one voting for her. I, <laughs> okay. also, I also just think the way she's treated her campaign before Super Tuesday, she, she well, then the debate before Super Tuesday, she accused Bernie Sanders of taking Super PAC money, which he didn't, and then two days later, she actually took Super PAC money, which has gone against everything she said. Well, the I mean, past she was couple desperate. Years. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, it's, but it's just like man, and then. Uh, she doesn't endorse anyone. Then she goes on SNL, and like it was a funny deal. But like, I, I just, I, I've, I've lost all. Sure. I just think uh, oh, she what? has revealed oh, herself no. as a major, as someone who's all about her own personality. Well, well, you and know, image. you know what she's revealed herself as a politician. Yeah. Because that's exactly what she is now. Totally. I, I saw a great tweet that I, I can't give credit to the person who was just because I don't remember. But when you see things like. Uh, on SNL, you see Kate McKinnon as Elizabeth Warren with the real Elizabeth Warren, and we saw Kate McKinnon as Hillary Clinton with the real Hillary Clinton, that a lot of people who voted for these candidates were actually voting for the portrayal that Kate McKinnon did of them. And that version of both of those women is so much more likable that what Yikes. they didn't realize... Come hey. on, you guys. Oh, oh I mean... I uh, so, you know, I mean, the, the that Hillary, I think maybe people might have been more inclined to feel bad for. I just have one last thing. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I very, I very, very, very excited to see the next debate, even though I, it sounds like y'all think it's kind of over at this point. And look, it's not looking great, but I do think it takes one massive gaffe of Biden to, to really mm. hurt him. Uh, and yeah, that video that, that about him saying like he endorsed Trump, it was edited oddly, yeah. but he still messed up and said that, Yeah, which is like, disqualified like you can't <laughs> you're not mentally you're not there like and it's 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 really tough to talk about because and i even i was bringing it up with i was with my dad this weekend in san diego and it's hard because you don't want to sound ageist you don't want to sound like you're offending him and like i've met him a bunch of times i'm from delaware the dude he's just not all there and that's just it's really concerning and i really do think that if, he, if when he's debating sanders Next, I think that there is a major opportunity well, to expose I, that. I do agree that it'll be really interesting to see. And I think that's another great one. Not having an audience there will probably make this one of the more. And also, you know, not having some of the, shall we say, dead weight on the stage. Uh, and I'm not saying that everyone on the stage in the last one was, but there were Tom Steyer. Like, why was he there? You know, so there were a few people that didn't belong there. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, do they have a better kind of conversation than we've had because there is only two of them. There isn't all the hooting and hollering from the audience. But ultimately, 
it won't matter how that debate goes because most people who are going to vote in the you know coming weeks aren't going to watch it. They just they just won't. I think more people will watch it. You have more people to be interested in. But as we talked about with some of the more recent debates, more people see the campaign ads than actually see the debates. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know how important it is. And I'll ask you, Chelsea, how important do you think it is? Do you think that that could be the uh, the life raft that uh Bernie is hoping for. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, it, it it would be really interesting if things turn out the way that Ryan suggests, and where you know Biden messes up, and then Bernie sails away with it. But I think it's a little bit deeper than that. I think people don't think that they deserve um, health care for quote unquote free, which is not free. It's just all of us have pooled our money together to make it less expensive. You you buy in bulk. Why? Why? It should instead of Medicare for all, it could have been. Buy in bulk mm -hmm. medicine. It'd be like Costco style. Like you just exactly. <laughs> you well, all join the membership, well, well, but, but, and you all get in bulk. Here's the thing: I love Costco, but <laughs> they can't. They can't keep the toilet paper in stock. They can't keep the hand sanitizer in stock. How can they keep the healthcare in stock? Anyway, you were going to make a real well, point. What was it? Well, the healthcare uh, this, industry can't do it either. So, <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> and and only the rich get toilet paper. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is. Um, I, well, the but, rich all have bidets, so, but I, you know. <laughs> but, or someone to wipe for them. But I, I think in some. Ways because Bernie has gone so far off the central message that I would have liked him to be on, which is all about cleaning up the corruption, restoring the democracy. And because his signature issue is Medicare for all, scary for people, it's a big leap. Even I'm like, I, I think it could it could be done, but but things would need to be cleaned up first because medical costs are so bloated because of the corruption sure that trying to implement medicare for all now seems a little dangerous so you clean up the corruption see prices naturally come down i mean what would happen and i've said this before if our food was better our air was better we were encouraged to um move more how do you encourage people to move more you're not encouraging people to get three jobs where they have to sit behind a computer all day so you're actually fostering figuring out a way to foster people having free time people you know after a while, you get bored, I think, on your phone. Maybe go for a walk on your phone with your dog or something. But I, I, I don't think people have the liberty to have a healthy lifestyle because work is such a domineering, oppressive priority, and your work does not promote your, well, your health. And I'd say people feel they have to work certain jobs to get the employee benefits of insurance, whereas some people might want to do different jobs, but they feel stuck in a particular job yeah. because of employee insurance, which is just a weird connection anyways. Your, your insurance shouldn't be connected to your employer. Yeah. I mean, it's just none of that makes sense. And um, but, but I would disagree that people are not going to watch the debate because if you've seen the previous debates – People have, obviously there were more candidates in there, but people have made their decisions depending on how that last debate performance is. Now I don't know if people want to sit for two hours for a debate between the two of them. It's like watching uh, what Statler and Waldorf. You know, might as well oh the two God. Muppet. By the way, I, you do just made me realize I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a write in for Waldorf. <laughs> That's a great idea. Oh, I've already voted. Uh, well, I mean, you Statler's know, like Biden November and I Waldorf vote. could be Bernie Sanders, but. I think that's the only thing is that it's two hours, but people will make up their mind. The unfortunate thing for Bernie Sanders, though, is it's still he's not going into friendly Bernie Sanders states now. You know, the big one is Florida, where he will not win at all, even if every everyone basically said, oh, he won the debate. Um, I do have to say I disagree with Ryan in the sense of if Biden's the nominee, Donald Trump also is not mentally coherent. And I think but also he's bullyish, very true. He's bullyish like but pe some people do. But it's a small core group yeah. and other people are fed up with. The corruption and, and the inept, you know, handling of this coronavirus and, and, and the, the economy inside, doesn't do like, well. I got more crumbs, so that must. <laughs> Some mean... people do, but I have a lot of Republican friends that are, you know, moderates um, that have told me that they will be voting for Biden. That are the, you know, even people that had kind of leaned towards Trump in 2016 are saying they will be voting for Biden if he's the nominee because they are fed up with him and the corruption and now the inept and like we've talked about all along. If the economy does not pick up, which at this point the economy is going to be severely damaged and people start to make up their mind about the economy as you head into the but spring. But then they'll say, oh, but the coronavirus isn't his fault. No, but the, well, like, the well, economy, Except you though. probably have people who will say, actually, it is his fault. But yes, I want to let you finish it's, your It's thought. the economy, though, and that's where people... It's uh, Take the coronavirus out of it. If people are starting to feel it in their pocketbooks and we're going to see now, this is nothing what's happening right now. This is volatility. But once you start getting into the second and third quarter, when you see that all these events have been canceled and, you know, 
people are not hiring anymore. There's hiring freezes, everything else. When that starts affecting people's pocketbooks, that's what they're going to care about. And they start to make up their mind on how the economy is doing in the spring. So if they feel the economy is not doing as well, that's the last thing Trump has. He has nothing else going for him in that sense besides people that are going to vote Republican regardless because of judges and all the other stuff. And if that happens, you're going to see more people peel away and independence, and it's not going to be good for him. And Biden, to most Republicans, feels safer than Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. So that's where I can see him picking up some of the well, states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, even Arizona, Florida. A lot of those states that are very much on the bubble could tip over to uh, the Democrats. I know, want to uh, share an interaction from the chat that I had with our great friend, Storage Yard Resident, who has uh, been with us from the very beginning. And uh, I don't know how many policy issues the panel <laughs> agrees with him on, but we can all agree how much we love his loyalty to this show. Uh, I asked him, who would you re most want President Trump? He's a, he's a, a Trump supporter. Yeah. Who would you most want President Trump to debate this fall? Biden or Bernie. And so his point of view is Bernie. So he would rather that. And I think that, look, the what what Ryan said about Joe Biden is exactly what I said about Bernie Sanders when this is pre-South Carolina. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's going to win. There's, there's no, I said on this show, I'm like, he can't win because it's so easy to just hammer away at what his thing is. And just, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be based in facts, you know, communism, all, you know, all that way. I don't have to say it again. That it's an easier uh, case to make. Uh, and then it's just like, yeah, what are you going to get out of Biden? And yeah, the two Biden and Trump on a debate stage, it's probably going to sound like Pink Floyd outtakes where you're just like, God, what was in the air that I have no idea. I don't know what any of it means. But ultimately, in the end, uh, I think it'll depend. Yeah. How do people feel financially? And, you know, it's not all coronavirus, but. We're getting all these, we're getting huge events like the music festival Coachella out here in Southern California that's getting pushed to October. So you're starting to get the feeling of like, there's going to be this middle part of the year where people are just like, uh, you know, afraid to schedule things. You know, they're, they're pushed a, a James Bond movie to November from what was supposed to be a couple weeks from now. And, you know, these have global implications, but you're starting to see that, you know, people aren't rescheduling things for May or June. You know, I would think in the middle of the summer, you're like, well, yeah, won't, ever, won't people be healthier by then? I don't know. Let's go back to October when, you know, flu season's about to start, at least in certain parts of the country. So uh, I think it's it really does come down to to that. And look, ultimately, it's just like, oh, there were a couple of things that certain voters liked about Trump. But they might it might just be as simple as like, yeah, I kind of had enough of that guy. And uh, I don't even really know that much about Joe Biden. I just know he's a different guy. And then it really could be sort of that idea that I was saying earlier that got Trump in, which is the not Hillary vote. It could just really be even for, like you're saying from Republicans is like, I just vote for not Trump. I do think the crossover for moderates, dire conservatives, you know, aren't, aren't going to vote for whoever the Democratic nominee nominee is. I think the idea of, of Bernie is is a lot harder for those voters to digest. But, you know, what if he know? had stuck to the uh, corruption thing, that that's that's what he wants to do. I mean, it would take an entire four years to clean up all the mess that not just been from Trump, but right. from before. Mm, well and if before. that had been his message mm. and uh, and then and then we'll see what kind of medical system mm -hmm. makes sense after that but um yeah and and, 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 health, different... and healthcare is a number one concern for people in general even before coronavirus it was the number one concern to voters but the problem is by saying it's all we're going to take away your your health insurance that you have scared a lot of people that might be afraid to take that risk a lot of people want it but now they're also afraid like what does that mean and then you start talking about raising taxes but they're not quite understanding like but no longer any co-pays you're not paying into your health insurance at work which is taking a huge chunk of your take-home pay every week you know those are things that weren't explained enough i think to a lot of people that then scared them thinking like oh great why well, I, I want health care but i don't necessarily want what i know taken away because most people are scared of change mm -hmm. that's a big concern and and taking it incrementally is, and the way that we easier to the way swallow. that the language about getting rid of health insurance companies, mm -hmm. if the case was made, we're going to do such a good job that we don't need health insurance mm -hmm. companies. They're going to be put out of business. Fine. But to say that they are just going to be, you know, banned, like that you, they, they're not allowed to exist mm -hmm. means that, OK, so what if this experiment with, you know, government paid for health care doesn't go so well and then we don't even have the options mm -hmm. 
to bring back the insurance companies because they sucked, but it was, I guess, better than nothing. Right. So Devil if the, you know, if the language was, we're going to put them out of business because we're going to be a better mm-hmm. system, I think that would have worked better than we're just going to do away with them. They, they ban them from the existence right. on, on Earth. Right. And that scared a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, and like you were saying, and, and Republicans would be more likely to vote for someone like Biden, who's a Republican. And light, the other problem is when they let them get away with government run mm-hmm. health care, it wasn't supposed to be government run. It's mm-hmm. government paid mm-hmm. for just like you. I mean, the unfortunate thing is that insurance companies do run the health care. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you would say, well, if you replace the insurance company, then the government then becomes the one who's denying coverage. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was just a lot of details to flesh out. Um, and it was, I think, too premature. Yeah, exactly. And that, and focusing on that took away his momentum, I think, for a lot of people, even though health care is the number one thing right now for mm-hmm. voters. Uh, in our uh, final couple minutes, I did want to talk about uh, some of the specifics of those results. We're not going to go through all of them, but I did find Michigan to be yeah. the, the biggest indicator. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, I guess, with uh, a 90, well, it's 100% of precincts reporting, but there's still some outstanding. So uh, working from what we have right now in Michigan, uh, Biden got 52% of the vote to uh, Bernie's 36%. And I didn't. I mean, this this was the guy who was floundering before South Carolina. I I'm very surprised to see the numbers in which people are voting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott, we always defer to you for the numbers. Was that the most surprising thing last night, or was there something else that really stood out to you? Uh, no, I think it what was even more surprising. Well, that was one of them, just because when you really broke it down, you saw where people were voting for Hillary and Bernie, like we talked about. Even the UP of Michigan, which should have been really big. Bernie numbers were trending towards Biden in Macomb County, Detroit. You saw the the numbers that went up for Bern, uh, to, for Joe Biden compared to Hillary Clinton were quite big. Some sure. points were 20 points or higher swing. So that was surprising. But I think the most surprising thing was Washington State and Idaho. North Dakota, I expected to be a, a Bernie state, and it did by pretty big numbers. But Washington State and Idaho should have been Bernie territory. And I was very surprised that... Joe Biden has eked out a win in Idaho, and then it's neck and neck in Washington State, which is such a liberal, progressive. You have some socialists on the board in Seattle. You know, I would have thought that that would have been a big Bernie territory, and to see that be neck and neck, I think that's even more surprising than Michigan. Michigan, you could see, okay, a lot of voters that may have felt uncomfortable with Hillary were able to go and vote for Joe Biden this time around. But if the—so basically the takeaway is that if the Bernie movement was healthy, Washington State would have been kind of just—you just would have walked away with it, right? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, that that I think surprised me. I mean, and look, he ultimately could very well win it, but the fact that it's— well, the polls didn't close 24 hours ago, but they closed like what 20, 21 hours ago, and we still don't know whether or not he won it or or not. Uh, yeah, Idaho did surprise me too. Uh, so I don't know. So uh, let's see. So on Sunday, between this episode and our next episode, there's that debate. They'll have no audience, which I think will be uh, very interesting. I think that they'll actually be able to get to. Uh, I don't know who's moderating it, but it's CNN and it's Univision. Univision, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, exactly what we get out of it. I, I'd like to think we get more out of it, but you know, I, I won't be disappointed if we don't because I can't be disappointed by anything anymore. Uh, and also, then there's going to be a lot of voting next Tuesday. And I think that could be the point where if, if Bernie has another night like this, and I don't have them all in front of me, but I know Arizona is is was one of them. And uh, I, I don't know. And I, Florida, which is the big one. Yeah. Know, as far as delegates. Right. So, I yeah, uh, I don't know. I, we Again, we're out of time. But, you got for, Arizona, Florida, Illinois, and Ohio. Yeah. yeah. So, all big, uh, big, big states. Uh, again, yeah. not friendly territory for Bernie Sanders. So that's what he's going to be up against is a lot of states. Uh, Arizona, a good, you know, help for him potentially. But I don't know. He yeah. hasn't done as well in the West. This, yeah, th- like yeah th- th- this is this is one you know uh, uh, old Joe could use the endorsement from Obama. You know, if he really if he was going to get one before, I don't think he's getting it. But and he doesn't need it uh, at this point. Chelsea, uh, just very quickly because we we are out of time. What what is your expectation for uh, where Bernie will be a, a week from today after that voting that we just uh, ticked off all the states? Oof. You know, I don't mean like delegate number, just sort of this the the state of the campaign at that point. I, my probably worse than over. today. 
Yeah. Because you feel today it's not it's yeah. not in good shape. So yeah. And then the only way that I was thinking of like how could I be excited about November would be if there seemed to be a movement among voters to put and now I don't know who it would be Elizabeth or Bernie as a Senate Majority Leader. What about Vice Presidential Candidate Chelsea Galicia? No. All right. Mm -mm. I was excited for that. You no, know, I would do like a Stacey Abrams. Mm -hmm. I think mm. would be exciting. I, I, I'd vote for you, but that's fine um, if you don't want to vote that out. If you would like to put my name in for a Supreme Court nomination, okay. Yeah, I like I'm that. I'm fine with that. I like yeah. that. I like Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and, and then Senate just very quickly to wrap up, Scott, where do you think Bernie will be a week from today when we're doing this show? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be good for him either because I think he's really going to have to make a difficult decision whether he, you know, throws in the towel at this point and helps consolidate the Democratic Party or if yeah. he's going to keep going. Because at some point, then you'll just get people, you know, mm -hmm. pissed off at you yeah. even more. And, it, yeah. and, and the danger in this debate coming up is that the damage isn't enough to turn mm -hmm. things into Bernie's favor, but then it's damaging enough to Joe Biden that people, people are resentful mm -hmm. of, uh, of Bernie. Or, yeah, it suppresses the vote. Enough. The vote, and that's what we really need right now. Um, so it's going to be interesting next week, and I'm also curious to see what Trump is going to do tonight in the Oval Office and what kind of uh, economic package he's going to try to come up with uh, to save his reelection. I just wonder what are the odds that he's just going to cough through the whole thing just because he'll think it's funny. So <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, that'll be that'll be somewhere that we uh, talk about next week. Anyway, we are out of time for this week. Uh, we will be back once again next Wednesday at 4 Pacific. That's 7 Eastern. Until then, Scott, where can people find you? you can find me on SMAN80. And Chelsea, where can people find you? At Chelsea Galicia. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at ChristianDMZ. And tomorrow night here on AfterBuzz TV at 9 Pacific for the Star Trek Picard After Show. That's all the time we have now, but we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 